Welcome to the Ottawa Rowing Club safety training video. Today we are going over some of the policies and procedures that are in place to keep you and other users on the waterway safe when you're at the club. First, we'll be looking at traffic patterns, starting with launching your boat. All rowing shells that are launched from the rowing club are to be launched with their bow pointing westward or upstream against the current towards the Alexander Bridge and Parliament Hill. After launching, crews are expected to row along the Ottawa side up towards the Alexander Bridge and then turn the shell perpendicular to the shore, traveling across to the Quebec side as quickly as possible. Crews are then to row along the Quebec side of the river until they reach an approved ORC turning point before turning their shell perpendicular once again and crossing as quickly as possible back towards the Ottawa side of the shore. When returning to the boathouse, ORC crews are expected to travel along the Ottawa side of the river, again going upstream with their port blade closest to the Ottawa shore. When docking, shells are to be returned to the club with their bow pointing westward in the same orientation with which they launched. Approved turning points along the river are displayed in front of the new boathouse between bays 2 and 3 on the course map. These are subject to change at the discretion of the ORC head coach, program coaches, or the executive committee when required. If there is an emergency or safety situation, crews are able to turn at any point along the river as long as it does not pose a risk to any of the crew members themselves or crews nearby. Should a situation arise where this was necessary, crews must also fill out an incident report in collaboration with their program coach. When starting a row up along the Gatineau side, it is important that all crews stop at the mouth of the Gatineau River in order to check for traffic and their course prior to proceeding. This is to avoid a collision with other vessels or fixed objects in the area. Each crew member on the water is responsible when their shell violates a traffic pattern. They're responsible for the violation itself and any damages that may occur to the equipment because of the incident. Coaches are responsible for enforcing compliance with traffic patterns. Coaches who are on the water with their crews are liable to the same extent as their crews for any violation of traffic patterns or damages caused by these violations. There are some exemptions to traffic patterns. Exceptions may be made when danger or an emergency situation makes it dangerous to row according to the pre-established patterns. However, deviations may only be made to the extent necessary to address the emergency situation or eliminate the danger. When deviating from the preset rules, it remains the rower's duty to warn others of their presence. Failure to warn others can result in the same penalties for violating a traffic pattern as it generally would. It is the responsibility of the rowers crossing the river to get into their correct lane once they've crossed and to watch out for, yield to, and avoid rowers who are rowing according to the rules on their respective side in their lanes. Rowing in the middle of the river should be avoided by all crews unless during a supervised race, crossing the river, or to avoid direct impact or collision. There is a traffic pattern map located on the river side of the large boathouse and in the back of the stairwell. Next, we'll be discussing some of the weather hazards commonly seen at the Ottawa Rowing Club. If a rower sees strong winds, white caps, hears thunder, sees lightning, or sees fog, they should not go out. When in doubt, don't go out. Starting with fog. Crews and coaches must avoid rowing in the fog that is sufficiently thick so as to hide them from oncoming traffic or to go out in foggy conditions which prevents the rowers from maintaining their proper direction on the water. Should a rower or a crew get lost in the fog, they are responsible for signaling their presence to other crews by using a whistle or calling out. If your boat is damaged because you did not make yourself seen or heard during a foggy situation, you are responsible for any damages that occur to your shell. If from the boathouse prior to launching, you can't see the opposite side of the river or you feel unsafe, you aren't expected to row. In a situation where the water is nice, even if there is lightning, hail, or high winds, crews and scholars must remove their shells from the dock and get off the water as soon as possible. If you find yourself in a situation where you are on the water out during a row and one of the aforementioned situations arises, you are to return to the club or a safe haven in the safest possible manner. That includes going against the traffic pattern on either side of the river as long as you can get somewhere to safety and doesn't put other people in jeopardy. 
Low light conditions are something we deal with lots at the ORC, particularly in our spring and fall season. Low light conditions include mornings before sunrise and evenings after sunset. All shells on the river in low light conditions must have a bow and stern light, which give them 360 degrees of visibility to signal their presence to others. Each rower, including a coxie, on the river in low light conditions must wear a personal light and whistle. These lights and whistles can be purchased in the ORC office for 15 bucks, or other arrangements can be made through Mac, Trail, whoever. Just discuss it with your program coach or the head coach prior to making your purchase. Cold water rules are another thing we deal with a lot in Ottawa, particularly in the spring and the fall season. Cold water rules apply when the river temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius. During these times, the ORC will fly a cold water flag and will be notifying all its members through its weekly newsletter. Cold water rules stipulate that nobody is to row past the mouth of the Gatineau River when they are in effect in order to minimize the time required to return to the ORC should an incident arise. Rowers and singles must wear inflatable PFDs, pairs and doubles must carry PFDs in their shells, and every rower on the water must be accompanied and directly supervised by a coach or a safety boat. During cold water rules, all rowers are to wear an approved and turned on light and whistle while on the water. Safety equipment and the boathouse. Boats must carry lights when on the water before sunrise and sunset, regardless of whether they are a rowing shell or a coach or safety boat. Coach boats must carry the following safety equipment as required by law. A baler, a whistle, a 15 millimeter buoyant heaving line, a flashlight, and a paddle. Boats must also carry safety equipment for crews, including life jackets for everybody on the water and thermal blankets in case of a dip. All of these equipment have been separated into two different bags. Coach boats will all have a numbered hockey bag with the life jackets for crews in them, as well as a blue safety kit labeled ORC safety with the number of the coach boat that corresponds with that kit. It is the athlete's responsibility when launching the coach boats to ensure that not only the safety kit, but also the life jackets are in the coach boat, as well as the plug being in the coach boat. The last thing you want is for your coach to sink right after you've launched. Rowing shells must be in good working order prior to launching and it is the athlete's responsibility to check these before going out. Each shell must have a bow ball that is attached and in good working order, heel restraints to limit the amount of space that an athlete can lift their feet up from the boat in the case of a capsize, tightened bolts, proper rigging and ensuring that all the vents are closed into the hull. Additionally, shells must be equipped with bow and stern lights when rowing before sunrise or near sunset. It is the responsibility of the rowers in the boat every row to check all the components prior to launching. At the boathouse, instructions for responding to an emergency situation are next to all telephones. Telephones are located between bays one and bays two on the water side of the boathouse as well as in the office. Furthermore, traffic pattern maps are posted on the water side of the large boathouse Safety policies and procedures are upstairs in the first aid cabinet in the office. The emergency action plan is posted near telephones in both boathouses, in the office and on the safety board located at the front of the new boathouse upstairs. It is everyone's responsibility to read it at some point, know it and be able to act upon it should a situation arise at the club. The club also employs safety conscious people. This includes the head coach and the lead program coaches who have the authority to cancel any rowing operations due to an emergency, hazard, or unforeseen event. Anybody that is operating a coach or safety boat must have the following. A boat operator's license, ideally first aid training, and must be aware how to get a rower out of the water and into a safety boat during a capsize situation. Safety boats and coach boats are required to leave the docks with the shells and to ensure that the rowers are supervised during their practice and must return to the dock following the shells return home. Coach boats and safety boat operators are responsible for helping enforce compliance of traffic patterns while on the water and reporting any sort of dangerous scenarios that may arise. Rowers. Junior rowers may not row unless accompanied by a coach or safety boat. 
rowers on the water are responsible for staying with their accompanying coach or safety boat, regardless of which program they're partaking in. Rowers are also responsible for understanding traffic patterns, navigation, boat operations, and capsize recovery. It is the rower's responsibility to wear the approved safety equipment and must advise a coach or safety boat operator if they have issues with swimming or removing themselves from their shell. Additionally, all rowers must be registered with ORC and Rowing Canada prior to getting on the water. Lastly, the Ottawa Rowing Club has an athlete's rep. If at any point during the season an incident occurs that you feel uncomfortable bringing to the attention of your program coach or the head coach, you can contact our athlete's rep whose sole job is to support you and make sure your voice is heard at the club. Send them a note at athlete.representative at the Ottawa Rowing Club.com or send a note to your program coach or the head coach and they will relay this email for you. It is everyone's right at the ORC to feel safe and respected and we want to ensure that everybody's wishes are maintained while they're at the club. That concludes the Ottawa Rowing Club safety training video. All the best with your season. Have a great day.